Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. Andrew McCart, IFL TV. It's Sunday very early in the morning. I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Sam Jones. We tried to get this done yesterday because obviously the news that had broke with the Tyson Fury cut postponement of the Usyk fight. But now there's a new date. Conor Ben fought last night. Boatsy Aziz last night. So quite a lot to talk about this Sunday morning. But uh, first and foremost though, Sam, how's things, my brother? Um, all right, Andy. All right. Not getting much sleep at the moment, but all good. All good. Can't complain. Well, that's what happens when you have kids. I'm in the same boat as you, mate. They're just, uh, let's be honest, they're a nightmare. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point of having them? They just, they just keep you up all night. Cost yeah. You a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, the the bigger one's fine. It's the little one. It's the girl. Oh God, Jesus. <laughs> Um, so let's, talk, yeah. let, let, let's take your mind off the kids now and let's talk some boxing then, Sam. Um, two days ago, uh, we got the, the, the breaking news of Tyson Fury got cut and sparring, two weeks out from the fight, postponement of the fight. Um, just go back to when you turned on Twitter or you turned on Instagram and you saw that clip that somebody had posted or somebody had WhatsApped you that Tyson Fury was injured and he was out of the fight. Just take, give me your initial reaction to that. I'd found out a little bit earlier on in the day. Um, uh, it, honestly, my first reaction was that that's shit, but it happens, isn't mm. it? It just it's just part of it's part of boxing. It's just, it's just very unfortunate that the biggest fight in the world right now it was it was it happened to that fight. But people like what I said on a few other interviews. People need to just relax and and stop talking nonsense like 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 it, it, it happens it's an open face head guard you got caught with an elbow mm-hmm. you got caught the fight's being rescheduled and here we, we are we are where we are Andy we're still going to get the fight um and that's all that that's all that really matters and I, I I know I know what you mean this like my my initial reaction was like oh no because I was so excited for this fight but we've got a new date it's only three months away stay team for me um, quite a quick turnaround for Tyson Fury for that cut to heal, but I suppose he's already fit. Do you know what I mean? So it's not a case of him trying to get fit. Um, and he's obviously, with the photo that he posted as well, he looks trimmed down a little bit now. He looks like he's got a little bit more definition about him. So I think a little bit more S&C work, stay away from the sparring and ramp up the sparring again a month out is good. But let me get your thoughts on what uh, His Excellency Turkey al Sheikh had said, reference, if any of them pull out of this fight date, they're getting uh, 10 million taken out from the purse they're forfeiting ten million dollars. Um, I quite like that. <laughs> oh, we're not going to be getting a pullout, are we? Well, that's it. They're both going to be sparring with Power Ranger helmets on and with forty ounce gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> you know those big pillow gloves, yeah. Um, no, uh, yeah, it's um, fair play. Look, like they put a lot of money. I, I said yesterday when they were like, "Oh, do you think Ergovic is going to fight Usyk on that?" I was like, "No," and it's not a disrespect to Ergovic, but. When you put the undisputed like out there and it's like everyone's looking forward to it and the promo was epic. Like you're not gonna just have a chance to kind of spoil that. You wanna get those two in the ring. So they've done the right thing. They've rescheduled the event a lot earlier than what I thought. I thought June, July, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. but fair play. If they think they think he's gonna be ready in May, then let's let's go. I'm really looking forward to it again. And listen, it is what it is, Andy. It is what it is. Tyson's not gonna cut himself to pull out of a fight. Like he just isn't gonna do that ever. And it's wild that people would suggest that he would do that when he's I've said before in many interviews, he's got he's took himself away. Nutritionist, S and C coaches, co- um, his coach, sparring partners, mm. time away from his family to go two weeks before the fight. I'm gonna cut myself on the eye to get out of the fight. Like it, it no, it, he's not gonna do that. Shit we happens. All a, we all love a conspiracy theory, though, Sam, don't we? Everyone knows a conspiracy theory. I think, listen, Tyson does say some wild things, but saying wild things is different to cutting your face to get out of a fight. Nonsense. Let's move on. Let's look forward to the fight. We're looking, we've got. You're not going to be spoiled for fights in Saudi Arabia, trust me. They're going to be doing fights, I would, from what I'm hearing, all year long. Mm. So uh, let's everyone stop bitching and complaining and just... We're getting the fight May eighteenth. That's the fight, and I am. Uh, I have to bring it up. I do feel very sorry for Lee Wood because that would almost put an absolute 
nail in the coffin for the city ground fight for Lee Wood because mm. they are not going to go on that on that day unless they did a three o'clock start for Lee Wood like a football game and then moving into the Tyson Fury fight that is the only way that works and I hope they pull something out of the back for him but you've got to imagine it's very unlikely now that he's going to get that fight. And listen, I'm a Derby County supporter. I'm born and bred from Derby. I don't like Nottingham, but Lee Wood deserves that moment. He does. He deserves his moment. Um, And I'll be gutted for him if he doesn't get it. Mm, I like the idea of a three o'clock kickoff, though, because we've seen... Three o'clock kickoff for Lee Wood. Three o'clock. They did it in Vegas for Conor Ben, so do it for Lee Wood. Definitely. Just staying on the the Tyson Fury, obviously there's no love loss between those teams and... um, I just want to get your, your thoughts on... Did you see what Igus Klimas had said? Uh... Yeah, I didn't like what he said, if I'm mm. honest with you. I didn't like what he said, what he wanted, because you can't effectively call Tyson a coward. You can't. You can't, from his point of view, you can't do that just because you, you're waiting a bit longer to, to, to get some dough. Do you know what I mean? You can't, you can't do that. You can't, you can't call another man a fighter... A coward, you can't. That's just, that's just, um, that's just my opinion. But no, I didn't really like. I like Egis, by the way, but I didn't rate what he said. Obviously, frustration. But I, again, I didn't like what he said either. Reference. I, I, I probably read it wrong. But when you read the quote back and you look at, it, he said mentioned like he asked his bitch to hit my frying pan to his brow. I, 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 I thought he was talking about past myself, but. He came out and said that he wasn't talking. He was talking about a member of his team doing it, and I was sort of taken aback by that. Like, I hope he didn't mean Paris there, but again, I, I don't think he did mean Paris. I just well, think listen, when Tyson stuck it on his toes on the interview, he didn't let. He kind of, he kind of, the the the, the kind of got a bit because mm-hmm. uh, I think Tyson literally meant every word he says. Don't bring my wife. Talk about me. Don't bring my wife up, and rightfully so, rightfully so. But whoever, listen, whatever, whoever he was on about, it's bollocks. Like. Mm. Ask my bitch to hit him with a fright. Like, like, I know you're upset because you're probably you're gonna be earning on your twenty percent or your fifteen percent, whatever percent you're gonna get. You're gonna get a fortune out of Alexander Usyk for that fight. Don't worry, it's coming. Yeah, well, talk about that. You're not gonna sign any heavyweights, Sam. Um, seems to be with the money. Listen, is. I do miss. I, listen, I love a heavyweight. I love a heavyweight. So, um, I would like to sign another heavyweight if I'm honest, because I do love the heavyweight division. Always have done, but. I'm very happy with where I'm at at the moment, Andy. Really happy. I'm very, very busy. Really busy. So I'm, I'm, I couldn't be more happy where I am with the stable I have, the fighters I have, the people I work with. Um, I'm enjoying it at the moment, Andy. I'm enjoying it. Good. Well, let, let, let's let's jump on to like obviously we 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 touched on the Conor Ben having that sort of afternoon fight in in Las Vegas. Did you watch his fight with uh, Pete Dobson? Yeah, I was watching them simultaneously. I, I had Con. I, had, I was watching the Zone on my phone. And I was watching Sky on the on the on the telly, so I was wa- I was watching it as as best as I was watching both fights as best as I could. I hate when they clash like that because I think you were like me and Johnny Johnny Escott who works with us as well. He was the same. He was split screen. And it's it's frustrating when they clash like that. But listen, it's, what can we do? But yeah, Conor, Conor Ben went there. I would rather that though than watch a fight at four o'clock in the morning with my yes. hectic life at the moment. So. I, I'm all good for split screens for that reason. <laughs> yeah, me too. To be honest with you, Sam, I honestly, me too. Um, yeah, the, the performance from Connor Ben, obviously, I, I, me, I was half expecting a big knockout, but listen, Connor did the corner box nice, and that Pete Dobson, I'll tell you what, he's made of granite. Yeah, listen, li- li- listen to me, right? Connor's always going to get stick now. He's always going to get stick, but ultimately, he didn't box badly. It was a bit of a flat performance from him, right? And Sometimes when you're told you're gonna you're gonna be boxing you back, you're gonna be boxing Brook, Boots Ennis, all these names, and then you you're winding up with Peter Dobson, who is effectively, and I don't want to disrespect him too much, a really good journeyman. Mm. Um, he was a really good journeyman, like negative style, comes out in fights as a as a go in bursts here mm. and there, because he did have a little bit of a pop at Connor, but negative. But very tough. I give him, honestly, hats off to mm. him. So, so tough. So, so tough. Took some serious shots. So, credit to him there. But Connor needs a big fight. They need to deliver him a big fight next. And I'm sure they will. I'm sure they will. So, um, I'll be looking forward to that. But listen, a win's a win. It's a unanimous points decision. The, he's, he's not boxed. Mm. For, uh, he's twice in two years. So, the, them rounds won't do him any harm. Definitely. It's a 12 round fight. But you're talking about a big fight now. Devin Haney came out and said uh, somebody mentioned something about his power. Devin Haney said, "Oh, he left that shit in the needle." And Connor obviously replied back saying, 
how, how yeah. can you talk pillow fists? When was, when was the last time you knocked anyone out um, and effectively yeah. said, listen, come and feel my power if you want to feel it. So a Devin Haney caught a Ben fight for me. I, I like that fight. Yeah, I do as well. I do as well. But do you know what? I'm, it's, it's off subject here. But I'm going to say, say, in boxing, Andy, right? Everyone has this like, oh, like I've had this argument with Eddie Hearn a bit before. And that, that Devin Haney is not a massive star in boxing, Andy. He isn't. He's not. You look at the, you look in boxing, you can count on one hand who, who if they boxed against you, mm-hmm. it would still sell out, yeah? Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Canelo Alvarez, Hank. Four. Mm-hmm. There are four fighters in boxing that can run their own show and it doesn't matter who they're fighting. They're the big, they're the big, they're, they're the stars of the sport. Do, do, do you understand what I mean? And I bring it up with like the Jack Cattrall situation. Everybody needs dance partners. Do you understand? Do you understand what I mean? Devin Haney needs a Ryan Garcia to make a big event. He's not going to fight Sandor Martin next because it will do 2,000 tickets in the middle of nowhere in America and it will do 2,000 buys on pay per view. Do you understand what I mean? So we have to make the biggest and best fights in boxing. Dance partners. You need dance partners to create huge events because you can count four. If, and I challenge anybody, anybody to tell me. Who, if there's any more, be my guest and tell me. Ryan Garcia, his last fight it, against that guy. I can't even tell you his name of the guy he boxed last time. It wasn't a sellout. If it was, I apologise, but I didn't hear much about it. Hmm. We've got to make the biggest and best fights between rivals, whether that's domestic fights, internationally good fights, like Progre against Haney. That worked because two re- undefeated fighters, re- oh, so not undefeated, I know Progre lost once, but it was a fight people were interested in. But that's the reason why I was campaigning for Jack to fight Progre, because I believe Jack would have done the same thing to Progre and you would have had an in-house world champion. Devin Haney's now a free agent, going from promotion to promotion. And it's, and I'm not disrespecting, they've done a great job with Devin. I've gone way off subject there, but mm. I do. there's method into what I'm saying, Andy, because... People have this percent, oh, he's a seven Haney's of stuff. No, he's not. No, he's not. He bought he boxed two fights in, in Australia in, in two stadiums because of Cambosis. Mm. It's just it, 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 it state that there's no superstars in boxing that can attract them, that can make their own events for fighters. The rest, we need to make make the best possible fights. And that's uh Sorry, I've gone off. Uh, sorry, I've gone off uh, way off subject there, but I know what I mean. No, it's a good point. It's actually a good point. I don't think many people will, will disagree with you. But you're talking about dance partners, and, and that that brings me on nicely onto that Dan Aziz Boatsy fight, then, doesn't it? Because yeah. um, great fight, oh, great yeah. trade fight, deserved more publicity than what it really got. But it is what it is. But no, great fight. Two really good chins, mm. excellent chins. Two really granite chins. Dan Aziz was very unfortunate. I thought he slipped twice. Yeah, um, might have, might have swayed the result a little a little bit, but I don't know. Really good fight. Um, the only fight I want to see Joshua Bawatsi in next is against Anthony Yard. Genuinely, that's the only fight I want to see him in. I think that's that that, that fight's been in the what well, has been talked about for how many years? Been now? in the cooker too long. It's been <clears> the, yeah. it's another one that's been over marinated, overcooked. You, they're both now in their primes. Get it made next. No excuses. I mean, the light heavyweight division right now. But there's talk about Cam Smith against Anthony Yard in that 5 fight. Great fight, great fight, great fight. So, again, if that happens and that, that leaves Boatsy sitting there somewhere with that British title and that Commonwealth title to fight, to fight who? To defend that title, if, if need be. I mean, we do have some very, very good light heavyweights in the UK. Um, I mean, we've got like Lyndon Arthur. Would that be a good fight? We've got Leron. Yeah, that's a, that's, a good, that's a good fight. That, that's a good fight. Do you know what I mean? Ben Whitaker? Yeah, there's some, the, 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 there's some really good fights to be made, but like what I say, let's make the biggest and best fights possible. Mm-hmm. Domestic fights, because we love... I mean, I love a domestic fight, Andy, in this country. Like, there was a good couple made yesterday, React Paul against Bloomsbury, looking forward to that. But Wardley against Clark, now that is a fight I will... Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm sold. I'll probably want to go and watch that fight. I'm really looking forward to watch that fight. But that's the fight. We, these are the fights we need, Andy. These are the mm-hmm. fights we need. Uh, like you said, especially when you've got a British title on the line, it just seems 
to bring out the best in. Yes, he does. He does. It gives the, 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 the Joshua White vibes, jo- Joyce Dubois. Yeah. Th- those, that, that's what we need. That is what we need. Definitely. And like I said, we're getting them though, Sam. I think 2024, we're getting there. I think the fights that we want to see, we're getting there. And uh, yeah, since I've got you, let's talk about it then. Any update on Jack Carroll, Josh Taylor? Can you can you shine any light for me? Because I know you've been putting stories on, on your Instagram of Jack saying, let's go and we're an hourglass and all this sort of stuff. So, Sam, what's going on? Yeah, um, we're getting there, Andy. We're getting there. We are getting there. So, hopefully some news, news soon on that one. Is that all I'm getting? <laughs> I've got a big mouth, Andy, so I don't want to be saying, oh, it's, it's here because the way this fight's gone, you have to imagine, I've been talking and dealing with this fight for... Excuse me. Since, since before, way before Christmas, since after Jack's fight. So Jack's boxed in October. Mm-hmm. So October, November, December, January, we're in February now. So four months, four over four months of, of, of trying to get this fight on. And... Uh, yeah, so I don't want to tempt fate, but we're heading in the right direction. We all seem to be on the same page. Um, even your mate seems like he wants to fight now. He's always so, wanted to fight, Sam. He's always wanted to fight. Calm down, Andy. Calm <laughs> down, Andy. <laughs> calm down, Andy. No, um, yeah, so we're, get, we're getting there. We are getting somewhere, Andy. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to say, yeah, it's done, it's, because it isn't, but we're getting there. Good stuff. Good. I'm glad to hear it, Sam. Uh, maybe me and you should do the press conference. That'll be a good little back and forth. Eh? No problem. <laughs> no fucking problem. <laughs> there we go. Let's talk some shit. Um, uh, uh, yeah, you're stable quickly. Right, right off. Karen Vong in a great fight. Mark Dickinson and what an opportunity for him. You, you spoke about a big opportunity for Mark Dickinson coming up. Yeah. And that, that, that middleweight tournament that's happening out in uh, Japan. I mean, the money that's involved in that. Wowzers, man. Huge. What yeah, a game huge. changer for uh, young Mark Dickinson as well. You win three fights, you've made a million bucks, plus the knockout bonuses, you're flying. Mm-hmm. So I can't do any more than... Because I, 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 I fair play to Tom Dallas there, but I pushed for Mark to be involved in that and give him that opportunity. So I'm really proud of get uh, proud to get him that, that opportunity to change his life, Andy, to change mm-hmm. his whole life. And he's going to shock people. He's up, he's up against um, the, the, the tournament favourite. On the bookies odds, he's up against mm-hmm. the tournament favourite in the first round. But Mark is going to shock people. Mm. And it seems like the, bet, the, bet, the, the better opponent you put in front of Mark, the better Mark we get, it seems. Still. Let's see. Let's see. Mm. Lee Eater manages the, uh, the French guy. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I For the life of me, don't know how to pronounce his name, so I don't want to do him the injustice of even have trying. You against, have you gone up against Lee Eaton before? No, never. Oh, oh yeah, Grant Dennis. Last fight with Mark. Oh, yeah. So it's 1-0 yeah, Sam Jones against Sam and Lee. Yeah, it's 1-0 at the moment. It's 1-0, so we'll see. That see should be happens. a little thing that we should... Uh, I suppose with your stable of fighters, man, you could probably do a little card yourselves. A fight no, Sam I've not got, Lee, a Lee's fight, got about fight, 200 fight. fighters. I've got, I've got eight. I, I always say there's a 5v5. Let's do it. Instead of a match from Queensbury, we'll get a, we'll get a Jones versus Eaton. Yeah, why not? I love Lee Eaton, mate. A lot of time for Lee Eaton. Um, oh, looking forward to it, mate. Like Mark's doing that. I've got Cameron Vong fighting Ishmael Ellis next week. And mm. then, obviously, if he comes through that, we've got a big fight for him lined up. Um, yeah, looking forward to it. I've got Hamza Udin making his debut in yes. April. Got um, Dan Howard fighting on March the 1st. Uh, young Muhammad Ali will be back in it in May. Yeah. For, for flying. For, for flying, Sam. Listen, Sunday morning, like I said, uh, you've had no, no sleep. Go and get yourself a coffee, my man, and uh, look at that little thumbs I up. I love that thumbs up thing. Did I do it on my side as well? Or is it just me? No, your phone's shit. That's my laptop, mate. It's not a phone. Your laptop's shit. Ah, fuck it. Anyway, Sam, appreciate you as always, mate, and I'll speak to you soon, brother. Nice one, Andy. Take care, brother. Bye-bye. Cheers, my man. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And sportsbook.